welcome back. Um, my name is Shadi Eschke, and I'm excited to tell you a little bit about our mammalian platform that we spent the last four years building um, here at Ginkgo. Um, okay, so um, the advances in synthetic biology are really revolutionizing medicine today. And this is really one of the, the reasons why uh, about four years ago, the leadership at Ginkgo decided to move into therapeutics. And um, these uh, examples here are what some of the examples from different uh, new tech, new uh, modalities that are changing the way we treat disease. So in cell therapy, we have the CAR T revolution, where Emily Whitehead here was just a toddler when she had failed multiple lines of, of therapy, and her parents very bravely uh, enrolled her in a clinical trial where her own cells were taken out of her body and reprogrammed to attack her cancer and put back in. And now, 11 years later, she's thriving as a teenager and living the life right that, that all parents want for a kid. Um, we see in AAV therapy the ability to correct broken genes. So here, Jack Hogan had a hereditary form of blindness, and he was 13 when he received an AAV therapy to deliver the corrected form of the gene. And this story just really is really inspirational to me. He um, had been uh, losing his vision. He couldn't see in dim light. And just three weeks after the single AAV treatment, he was able to ride his bike at night, which was something that he wasn't able to do um, at all before. Um, within CRISPR, we see the ability to correct sickle cell disease, which is a debilitating disease. Victoria Gray here was unable to have a full-time job or to care for her children, and now she can do that. Um, and then in stem cells, we see um, a lifelong diabetic, Brian Shelton, who now has his blood sugar um, controlled normally with um, a pancreatic cell transplant. So these are pancreatic cells that are made from iPS cells or, or stem cells that now produce insulin. And so he's free from all the, you know, um, finger pricking and insulin injections that a diabetic has to deal with. Um, so these are remarkable demonstrations of how across different new modalities, synthetic biology can transform lives uh, one at a time. And you may have heard, some of you, that the mission of Ginkgo is to make biology easier to engineer. And for me personally, what that means is so that we can have more of these success stories. So to extend CAR-T beyond blood cancer to more challenging tumor situations, to make AAV work not just in the eye, which is a privileged immune environment, but to all tissues in the body. And what that really means is improving the efficacy and the safety of these medicines as well well as the access, um, critically. Um, so I'm happy to sort of unveil today the three therapeutic service areas um, that, that we uh, are actively working on in our mammalian team. Um, I often tell people that our mammalian group, my experience has been very much like a startup within the bigger ginkgo ecosystem. And so we're sort of coming out of stealth with RNA therapeutic services, uh, cell therapy services, and AAV services. And these are all very different therapeutic modalities, but what they all have in common with each other and with the rest of ginkgo, all the plant stuff and the burgers and the fragrances, is the common infrastructure and approach to library design, to high throughput screening, and to integrated uh, data analytics and model building. And so, um, again, what's common is high throughput exploration of design spaces, genetic design spaces. And what I want to show you now is some vignettes from each of these three fields that demonstrate how we're leveraging our capabilities in, again, high throughput exploration of genetic design spaces to address the critical challenges. OK, so starting with uh, RNA therapeutics. RNA is a really attractive therapeutic modality because of its easy programmability. You've all seen that with your multiple COVID vaccines, right? But that comes with trade-offs for durability, stability, and, and other, um, other properties. And one way that we're approaching these, these trade-offs um, at Ginkgo is to explore circular RNA, which just by the nature of its circular structure has, um, you know, addresses some of the stability and durability um, problems. And just as a little teaser, 
user, you can see the plot in the bottom right that shows the extended um, expression time of the, the lines on the top are all the circular RNAs. These are different designs made at Ginkgo relative to the traditional linear capped mRNA, which is the red dotted line that dies off pretty quickly. Um, so, but this is a relatively new therapeutic modality. So there's lots of sequence space left to explore. So how to extend that, that timeline longer? How, how is it different in different cell types? How is it different with different payloads? How can we optimize the translation? So RNA is just step one. You have to turn that into a protein. And that's driven by different sequence elements in different cells. So um, together, um, we've built a really world-class team to look at these questions. And, and as Part of that, um, we welcomed uh, Circularis Biotechnologies last fall, who brought um, decades of RNA experience to add to our, um, our code base and our methods for circularization. And I also want to point out that our, our work in therapeutics doesn't end at discovery. Um, critically, we also work in manufacturing process optimization because that's really what's going to turn what is a technology into a drug, right? And um, in RNA, for example, we just signed a, announced a new partner in a novel um, mRNA manufacturing technology with um, sensible biotechnologies. And I'm um, hearing in-house with our own circular RNA platform, we're getting over 80 80% purity, which is, which is really a high bar for these advanced therapeutics. Okay, so continuing with the theme of um, exploring untapped biological diversity, I want to do a little bit of a deep dive on our CAR-T platform. So CAR stands for Chimeric Antigen Receptor, and um, what you really need to know about that is that it has an external part that engages with a tumor and an internal part that drives signaling in a killer T cell. And um, there's five of these that are approved today. And what's just fascinating to me is that these five all have one of two different signaling domains. They're all the same of, of, within two choices. And furthermore, this is the same design that was the first one that worked 20 years ago in the academic publications. And but since then, our ability to read and write DNA has progressed dramatically. So if you were to start the question today of how would you design a car, you might do something differently. And here at Ginkgo, this is exactly what we've done, is harnessed our ability to make big DNA libraries and to use sequencing as a cheap and efficient readout. And so here we made not one or five or 10, but 10,000 unique car designs. They all differ on their inside signaling parts. And we put these into T cells, and we do an assay that mimics what happens in a solid tumor. And each one of these CAR designs has a DNA barcode. And we can use our sequencing capability to now read out the effect of each one of these 10,000 different designs. And then after we get that, we take them and we put them in head-to-head -head tests against sort of the standard therapeutic FDA-approved CAR designs. And in our first time of doing this, we found a number of designs that are meaningfully better than the sort of first prototype designs from you know, 20 years ago, which are actually approved therapeutics today. And so now we're, we're able to continue and iterate on this library design using some of the methods that you heard Emily Renbeck and the protein engineering team um, talk about this morning. We can build ML models. And as this platform that we've built, there's different ways that partners can access this now. Um, we can, we've, we've reduced the screening to practice. You can just do this again and give you new results in, in specific contexts um, within a short period of time. Or you can just take the designs that we've already validated and use them in a, in a new CAR-T context. And then, um, you know, we've built this, this platform for this problem specifically, but it also can be extended to similar problems. So we can make binders, of, um, libraries of extracellular binders, or do this in specific different cell types, like say natural killer cells. Um, so we see this as a very um, uh, flexible uh, platform that we've built within our team. 
And just to kind of um, double click on what diversity and scale really means to us, I just wanted to walk you through a schematic of what a typical Ginkgo experiment looks like for us in CAR-T. So I talked about the 10,000 different um, signaling domains, but these are now put together with different CAR binders of different affinities, and then we test them in T cells from different donors. That's a really important um, thing to do because my T cells are not going to be the same as somebody else's. And then we test this against multiple tumor cell lines with a high replication factor. So for us, one experiment is 720,000 unique tests. And so this is how we can really explore the, the corners of biological diversity to improve upon function. Okay, and um, you know, ginkgo is nothing if not adaptable. And I think for these kinds of um, advanced um, technologies and advanced therapeutics, that's especially critical where some new breakthrough from an academic lab or some really important clinical trial results can shift the focus um, in these fields. And so for CAR-T, we've built a suite of services that address not just CAR-T as we know it today, which is called autologous CAR-T, taking a patient's own cells and reprogramming them, but the future modalities of what CAR-T may look like in the future, including allogeneic, which means taking a healthy donor's T cells and reprogramming them, starting from stem cells, or actually doing all the reprogramming in the body. Um, and so there's a number of services on here, I won't talk about all of them, but just to highlight some of um, what I think are the most um, exciting things coming up for us are uh, mining for um, novel gene editors from our proprietary metagenomic databases and actually screening these in relevant cell types and taking a new approach to um, what's called immune cloaking, being able to hide transplanted cells from the immune system to prolong their function over hopefully you know, what can be decades in some cases. Um, okay, I'll end by introducing our um, AAV platform, which is in many ways the most mature expression of our vision for end-to-end -end capabilities across discovery and manufacturing. Today, through our internal work and also our recent acquisition of, of Stride Bio, we really have all the pieces that you need to put together to make um, an effective therapeutic. So this includes the capsids that will determine the cell type specificity um, the promoter can also add another layer of specificity and importantly control the strength of the transgene that you're expressing. Um, we, can, we have a number of technologies in, in manufacturing as well. And this is really how our mammalian team got started um, uh, several years ago with you know, just one sad person <laughs> pipetting uh, all day. And now um, we're proud to say that we've automated most of this work to tens to hundreds of thousands of, of automated AV experiments and measurements across multiple modalities. And we're still scaling this with the opening of our newest BioWorks called BioWorks 7. And if some of you come on the tour, you'll be able to see that, and some of the new work cells that uh, or robots that we've put in place there. And um, I'll end by introducing um, Kenan Smith, who comes to us um, from Stride Bio to explain their um, unique evolutionary approach to capsid discovery and, and design. Hi, everyone. My name is Kenan Smith, Senior Engineer 2 at Ginkgo Bioworks and formerly Head of Capsid Engineering at Stride Bio. While at Stride, my colleagues and I brought together our combined structural and functional understanding of the AAV capsid uh, in order to try and tackle pre-existing immunity, tissue tropism, manufacturability, and other challenges in the AAV gene therapy space. Uh, and I want to talk to you guys today about the engine that results from that and some of the capsids that came out of it. Uh, the Strive engine utilizes the structural knowledge to identify areas of highest impact across the surface of the AAV capsid uh, with roots in modifying the AAV, G AAV antigenic surface in order to generate synthetic libraries of AAV variants. Uh, these libraries are then evolved through multiple animal species through a cross-species method in order to enrich for cross-species compatibility uh, in order to try and de-risk clinical development. 
Uh, the resulting platform enabled the discovery of a portfolio of promising capsids, many of which directly address the aforementioned challenges, as well as modulating other functional areas, such as liver targeting, potency, and cell type specificity. In addition to these select candidates, the platform also resulted in a wealth of untapped library data across AAV capsid variants, across different tissues and different species. Uh, and these stride bio capsids are currently divided into three tiers of development. The first tier includes fully developed capsids with extensive data that includes large animal models such as NHP and PIG, uh, and these capsids are ready to go for partners to match their desired indication or application. Tier 2 capsids have entered the first stages of testing and have demonstrated profiles differentiated from their parental backgrounds with initial in vivo or ex vivo data. Uh, these two tiers, Tier 1 and Tier 2, uh, exhibit a wide range of diversity in their tissue tropism. With capsids targeted to the CNS, to the heart, to the muscle, to the liver, uh, and even to ex vivo targets such as T cells. Uh, in addition, some of these capsids have exhibited potency higher than their parental serotypes, such as the Tier 1 capsid STRI 47, discussed at ASGCT last year. Uh, this capsid has been shown to strongly transduce the kidney and at higher protein expression to vector copy number ratios than the parental AAV, uh, indicating a more potent capsid. Uh, this last tier of capsids, Tier 3, is made up of capsid libraries and pre-existing evolutionary tissues from Stride Bios programs. This tier of capsids represents the largest well of untapped potential and contains variants ready for discovery and for development. Um, so with the, with the acquisition of these tiers, uh, we at Ginkgo Bioworks have access to an unprecedented depth of data around the structure function relationship of the AAV capsid. Uh, we're uniquely positioned to take immediate advantage of both the capsids themselves in order to enable the ambitions of our partners across the gene therapy space, but also to use the data to continue improving the capsids for our partners. Ginkgo's institutional capacity for machine learning and automated high throughput screening will allow us to pursue and build upon the assets from Stride, utilizing our pre-existing work in the gene therapy space to expand upon the capabilities of the Strive platform. For instance, Ginkgo's ability to engineer regulatory elements may enable more sophisticated and refined applications of Stride's capsids with respect to tissue tropism. Um, so I want to take a second uh, and take an example of one of the capsids designed using this platform, the Tier 1 capsid Strive 5, and I want to discuss its unique characteristics. Uh, so Strive 5 in particular was selected for its cell type specificity, liver targeting character, and manufacturability. And this capsid has been extensively vetted for its biodistribution and expression in mice, pigs, and NHPs with multiple transgenes. So the data you can see here, uh, which is discussed at AASGCT 2022, uh, shows Strive's ability, Strive 5's ability to broadly target the CNS after ICM delivery in NHPs, uh, but specifically to target neurons over astrocytes, uh, as shown here by Nguyen and M-Cherry co-staining. When we uh, characterize this transduction via m -cherry ELISA, we also see that the Strive 5 capsid produces up to tenfold more protein than the wild type AV9 capsid in areas such as the premotor cortex and cerebellum, despite a lower vector copy number in those areas, again, indicating a more potent capsid. In addition, Strive 5 has also exhibited up to a thousandfold lower transduction by vector copy number and protein ELISA uh, in the liver after both IV and ICM administration, data represented here again by IHC. So higher potency of transduction in the CNS after ICM administration coupled with lower transduction uh, in the liver is exactly the type of safety improvement that Ginkgo is looking to unlock through the refinement of Strive Bios capsids. Uh, and then last and certainly not least is manufacturability. So Strive 5 capsid has exhibited scalable manufacturing with over 10 transgenes uh, and has produced a high purity vector from R&D grade up to GMP phase one and two. Um, so the selection of high yielding capsids is actually a built-in component of the Strive platform, as we've mentioned previously. Uh, and these efforts really neatly complement Ginkgo's successes in engineering the other components of AAV production and its manufacturing systems. So in total, with this acquisition and continuation of the spirit of Stride Bio's work, uh, Ginkgo has now realized its ambition of a, fully, a full stack shop for AAV gene therapy uh, from caps, capsid and transgene through manufacturing. Um, thank you guys very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the talks.